Hello everybody and welcome back to the Night Night Podcast where we are reviewing the IMDb Top 250 in alphabetical order until someone invites us to camp. Better believe it, baby. Personally. Today, we are discussing the film 1917. It has a score of 8.2 out of 10 on IMDb. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a spoiler review of this film and then acquire the patented Mate Night Machine score to determine if the hype is justified. Fred... What is 1917? 1917 is the first film we've done that doesn't start with 12. <laughs> yeah, Isn't that that's right? so true. Yeah. So IMDb Top 250, we're doing um, them in alphabetical order. Episode 4, I believe. The first three, inexplicably, all start with 12. It's such a lovely number, though. Three times two times two, three times four, yes, six times two. It's a great number. They've thought of taking away base 10, haven't they, and doing base 12, which means like everything... Like clocks. Yeah, everything would be divided by 12. But 1917, war <laughs> film... to the film review. War film set in the First <laughs> World War um, around a story that was based on real events, a German tactic during trench warfare to get... Uh, the allies to come in and then they were going to... To overextend. Them. Yeah. So that they were vulnerable. They'd, written, they'd, they'd, they'd done a new, an new trench line. And it's a Sam Mendes directed film. Did pretty well at the Oscars. Famous for particularly the long takes that it uses. Almost entirely one take look. It, yeah, it's made to look like it's in three takes. Which I think, before we even get started, like... Holy shit, it's incredible That's that mad. they pulled that off. That I think Roger mad. Deakins is the name of the DP. Derek's He's very famous, him. Yeah, he did Skyfall. He did, mm. uh, he did a bit of a legend, stuff, as far yeah. as I know. And, I mean, this is just another film that's absolute testament to it, man. Holy. To, yeah. make a, to make a film look like that, I could tell you the longest take that was done. So, obviously, it's made to look like it's mm -hmm. all in one. The longest take was eight minutes and... 30 yeah. seconds, something like that. Which is mad. You're talking about a two-hour film, which is in three takes, certainly looks like three yeah. takes, and for the longest to actually only be eight minutes. Incredible. Incredible. Pretty wild. Okay, so, so war film, out of the First World War. Yep. Intrigue, interest, but what do we think? What does the Mate Night Machine think? That's the question. What we're going to do is we'll start with a, a gut mm -hmm. reaction. Sure. Like, what did you, what do you hope that the Mate Night Machine might give this sure. film? How much did you enjoy it? Three, two, one. 7.1. 9.0. Oh, wow. <laughs> 9.0. Oh, wow. Yeah, man. All right, talk to me. I mean, first of all, I just, I find this film makes me cry every time. I just think it's, <laughs> it's just such a heart-wrenching story. This one came up, we did, for anyone interested, the Mate Night Saddest films of all time. So films that we've watched that have had the, elicited the biggest emotional response from mm. us. Jamie's very good for that because does... I seem to cry a lot, a lot of movies. You, you elicit a lot of emotional responses. And exactly. this one was a heavy hitter for you. I just, I, I think that partly it's, okay, so the main reason that I love this film so much is in a similar vein to why I loved 12 Angry Men so much mm. is the stakes and the plot are just straightforward. Mm -hmm. I can't, I, I never knew this until recently. I just can't stand non-linear plots. Like I'd much rather you just... Start me at the start with some stakes and just spend the movie trying to do something. And this is about as linear as it gets. <laughs> this is perfect. Almost entirely so, shot as one take. I loved the fact that it was just absolutely straightforward. This is the story. Now, mm -hmm. this is the second or third time I've watched it. And one thing that Faye said when she was watching it was, and we, she is particularly bad for forgetting films. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I remembered so much of this okay. film. Right. And I could completely agree. It's one where okay. every single, you could always remember the next thing that happened because it, the pacing for me felt really quite right. It just kind of, it felt like a lot happened, but it never really felt super rushed. Mm. As soon as you leave from the explode, you get this, the, the, very start where it lays out this is what the film's going to do and then no man's land and then the exploding tunnel and then you go pretty quickly into the death of uh what's his face the mate like, just just for anyone who maybe didn't realize spoilers for I, classic I spoilers reviews. you mentioned it start. perfect go, um, go for it and then and then you meet a bunch of others and then mm -hmm. you fight you and then you're trying to cross this river and you're getting shot at and then yeah. you get, do you know what I mean? There's never a moment that doesn't feel like something is happening that's quite significant. Mm. So narratively, absolutely loved it. 
Um, I'm not going to comment too much on performance other than to say I had no issue with any of the performance. Okay. Um, very beautifully shot, absolutely gorgeous movie. And the whole one take thing, if you are going to make a piece of art, do something fun and adventurous sure. like that. It's so much fun. Yeah, a lot of the critiques were like, it felt a bit like a cutscene in a video game mm. for a lot of it. And I think part of that could be from the single take thing. I think it feels kind of Sorry. strange doing that. Yeah. And you know what? I can understand why people might not enjoy it that much. But for me personally, there's novelty there that r made it much more enjoyable for me. It was like, you've gone and taken a war movie and done something without taking away, without detracting from this great narrative. You have added something that I haven't really seen before. Mm. So on that, <clears throat> I just thought, incredible the sound the visuals wow yeah nine wow that is mega so for me it's a war film war films fall into a similar headspace to whodunits and detective novels where it's very hard to do it badly there's okay. like a general level that they'll all reach and it's because they they have the genre has tropes that it can pick from. So in the case of like crime and mystery novels, um, they're all geared in a way where you're left on the edge of your seat because there is one inherent element that we're trying to find out and they can leave clues and red herrings and they all are quite similar in scope, but they'll each try and have some level of variety and uniqueness, which will make it a more impactful whodunit or crime film. Crime novel, I should say. For me, that means that whilst they are never bad, I struggle to find any that I think are exceptional because they are all, they all have some element of similarity to them. And it's the same for war films with me. I was thinking during it, this is a good war film, but will I really remember this in five years' time? So it's interesting that you say you and Faye felt for certain that you did. Well, we definitely remembered all the details mm -hmm. and the steps within the plot. And I think that you, you make a very good point about the whodunits absolutely agree. Mm -hmm. The war films, I think, could fall potentially mm -hmm. victim to that. That being said, I think part of the reason why I was able to give this a nine, I think I'm just a bit of a sucker for a war film. I think yeah. when, you, when you have stakes that are so blatantly clear, for me, you just can't not have a, a, like an amazing narrative. That being said, didn't think much of Dunkirk, but that's for mm. a different episode. Yeah. But th this, I mean, Hacksaw Ridge was another one which I just left and I was like, that just really resonated with me. I just felt mm. so much pain in the story that's being told is it, they all the the similarity between them that really resonates with me is the constant reminder that these are just basically kids who've been dragged into this mm. situation and it's so heartbreaking to watch it happen yeah and so you know that it happens so many people it's an interesting point and particularly that they did a good job with the accents here because historically war films made in britain would have posh actors playing all parts whereas actually when you're talking about historically in in real life it would have been the working class who were filling the trenches much more so and then the officer class would have been the posh people which in this case you got colin firth bendit cumberbatch mark strong they were all clearly doing a more received pronunciation accent so that was a nice little historical they accuracy thought about that they the accents. yeah i think it starts and ends with me for the uniqueness with 1917, with the long takes. That's the groove that they found themselves in. This is how we will separate ourselves from other war films. And so if you are bought into those long takes, then it will really emphasize the impact that the film had. Yeah. And I think for me, I was more in the camp of this feels like video gameplay. Right, yeah, just, okay. Just, I, I thought you are taking a pretty arbitrary war story mm -hmm. and you are adding a gimmick so that it is it seems a bit better than it is that's how i felt yeah i think that if you split it at yeah it's a visual work of art and mm. uh, and but narratively i i agree not wholly unique but mm. 
I thought narratively pretty well executed. Sure. Like I, I really, I really liked a lot. Every, every part that I was supposed to feel weary or really mm. sad, grieving or anything like that, I feel like it did a great job of. And I remembered it when I left it and it made me cry. <laughs> so yeah, did you, you cry know? again? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I, I, and there's two. There were two scenes. There was obviously the death, and then there was also the one where he has to break the news to his brother. Which I think you said is was the, the worst one that for made you. me cry. The first time I watched it, I left and I was like, "Holy shit, this mm. is sad." I wonder whether you know how there's all this sort of talk of inclusivity in movies, and you do tend to. I wonder if there's an element of me just having more of a connection with the main characters because it's about brothers and it's about young British. Mm. gentleman and so like i when he has to deliver the news to this guy that his little brother's died there's an element of familiarity there that might be partly why i enjoyed this film so much do you know what i mean there's a so for me that actually took away a tiny bit okay not because i don't empathize with that sentiment i i love that but it becomes really disingenuous for me even with the slightest little hiccup so without meaning to I will be very critical of scenes which are trying to show camaraderie and brotherhood if it's closer to home. Okay. So in this case, let's say there's the scene where they're all in the, where he, uh, his friend dies and then he gets picked up by Mark Strong's uh, troop and then he goes in the back of the van with them and they're all chatting away and taking bantering. the piss. They're bantering, and they're doing impressions of the the posh officer. Um, maybe if I wasn't English, I would have found that more heartwarming. Okay. But for me, I was just like, they're trying to make this seem genuine, and like actual boys just taking the piss out of each other, but it's just... Yeah. It's just a bit too movie. It's a bit too stylized. Yeah. And, and that d detracts more than it should, admittedly, for me. Things like that, I like... Meh. I do think you're right. That scene was... The, the dialogue in that scene was pretty... You could kind of see straight through it. Yeah. Do and, you know what I mean? And to a broader point, I, I did think the dialogue was just bordering on the stagnant for me yeah you know my particular gripes with dialogue where if it's even a tiny bit if it's even a tiny bit hollywood or glamorized okay or stereotypical i do get my yeah yeah my skin crawls a tiny bit and this was a case like that i remember their initial um blake and schofield's expedition into no man's land they had a back and forth and they kept talking and i was just not feeling it okay the first time that i really felt uh, empath empathy towards the characters and i thought that they both did a great job was in blake's death yeah i okay. thought he had a, gr a good death scene i thought it was a pretty pretty solid one and it actually ties into one element of the si the film that is great which is the set pieces like there are three in particular i'd be interested to see what your favorite was so the ones that i've put out what was the best set piece let's say these four so the booby trap german trench mm -hmm. the plane crash running through a coot so when he's getting chased and finally when he's over the top yes. and running running towards the um colonel there's a very famous shot of each of those that probably a lot of people have seen but yeah the bit <laughs> if you're listening if you watch the film at the end where mm. he's running in one direction and the people are the, yeah the no the other soldiers the battalion they're, are they're doing a and push the over the top yeah and he needs to get to the colonel who is 300 yards away of the at the other side of the trench in order to get there. If he went along the trench, it would take him a long time because he'd have to go through all the bodies. However, if he goes over the top with them whilst they're running at the enemy and instead runs perpendicular. So all the way across the line, just above, he could get to the Colonel in time to stop more people dying. Yep. Um, and everyone's going, what are you doing? That's suicide. Don't do that. And he does it anyway. And, there and on all four of these, except maybe the booby trap German trench, I thought didn't really do it for me. But the other three, really, that is where the long takes came into their own. 
Okay. Like the fact that you felt, for instance, in that run across no man's land, or sorry, that run across um, yeah, par- the, parallel the to the trench, field. the last, the last one. Yeah. The fact that we'd basically been seeing his journey for about forty minutes at that point without them cutting. Yep. It just really added emphasis to this tracking shot of him running. It was pretty amazing. I think. Yeah. I think that the, it was absolutely gorgeous movie and I, yeah you're absolutely right there are moments where the long take is adds and there are moments where maybe the long take feels superfluous you yeah. know it feels but i do think that one of the things that does make this film quite cool for me is because it all is in one take you get a really interesting sense of scale because you are literally mm. basically there's very little distance covered if any without him being by your side. It's a good point that, yeah. And it is quite interesting. Have it's not a, it's not something that cinema does very often where you have that much of a sense of this is how much distance we've covered. This is the world that we are in. You've literally seen us get from point A to B every step of the way. Mm. That's such a cool element of the film for me. Yeah, it's true. Really diving into the weeds of time in this setting is yeah. something you just don't get to appreciate in in films of this nature so that was really cool and the way that they did get around i mean it is a, a tiny bit of a cop out the way that they got around the fact that it needs to be about an eight or nine hour uh mission yeah see i thought people were going to complain about that because there are a couple of devices that were used that if you mm. pay attention you can tell for example he goes downstream in the river and it quite quickly turns from nighttime to daytime yeah Personally, I thought that they were a very, very small cost for what gave me something so unique. And they Mm. were an absolutely necessary cost to make it happen. And the truth is, if you're not looking for it, it actually feels pretty seamless anyway. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was like, yeah, obviously, he's just jumped out into the river from Lacoste like one minute ago. And now it's daytime and he's sat in the forest listening to people sing. Yeah. That's not how that would happen. But you know what? It felt seamless enough that the payoff was there for me. I didn't really have an issue with that one. I I guess what I'd want to ask is, how did you feel about his getting unconscious scene where he gets shot, him and the sniper shoot each other, and then a a series of hours pass and it's nighttime in Iku? How did I feel about it? Yeah, yeah. I felt like it was a pretty... It was fine. That yeah, was fine. it wasn't exactly the best moment in the film, but why did you have an issue with that? To be honest, having heard you talk about it, I did feel the relief of the take being over. Okay, I did think it's nice that there is a a breather. Yep, because it was like it was building tension, so it was almost purposeful that we got to this point where there was this release. Mm-hmm. However, I wouldn't say that it was. I was purely either enjoying it or, or felt that it could have been done that way. It's similar to the, the stuff we spoke about, about the video gameplay at certain points, I, I did feel like maybe the long take isn't entirely necessary at all this point. Mm. So to have the breather was good, but equally looking back on it, I do think you have set out and done something. And then there is this like block of, we need to lose seven hours. Maybe it's a bit of a cop out to just have him fall unconscious, like get knocked out and fall unconscious for that period. It's a bit convenient. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't mind the conveniences of those because I think I I really do want to say that the whole one take thing, whether it landed or not, I will always be grateful to a filmmaker for trying to do something different to other people and it landed for me in this case, but I I didn't I didn't like a lot of the uh, gambles that they took with Joker Folly I do the other day, and I still had plenty of respect for it, and I was still yeah. perv- I was absolutely yeah. same tune. If you are going to try something, you have extra points from me because I'm grateful for you doing that. One hundred percent respect the effort, but I think we should find out how it stacks up. Is it really an eight point two? Did you say or is it eight point three on IMDb? 8.2 on IMDb. 8.2. Is that justified? Or are we more justified? Are you in your nine? Am I in my 7.1? Nine was chosen very intentionally as an, an enjoyment score. Yeah, for sure. And you've, you've clarified that. But what do we... What do the people really need to know? We're going to go to the Maynight Machine. As the custodians of the Maynight Machine, See what we're going to find out what you and I really think. Yeah. We're going to... Ruffle some feathers. We're going to shoot some targets. Twiddle some levers. Maybe stab a guy. Yep. 
Stab a, stab a German. <laughs> stab the Bosch. Crash a plane. Who knows? It will tell us what to do. It will tell us. If you're listening on YouTube, you can find the Main Night Machine tapes in the description below. It will take yep. you to our podcast, which will have chapters, and you can find the tapes from the Main Night Machine. How does the machine do what it does so well? We'll Let's be right back. We're gonna to have to stop doing that, mate. Shell shock That's, is taking years off the end of my life. I am, I am, I've got PTSD. Yeah, Probably. I'm gonna wear a coat next time. <laughs> Just, yeah, whatever. Yeah, a Mac, maybe. I'm gonna to have to. It depends. It depends on. Yeah, right. Okay, but we have a score. Yeah, baby. We yeah, have the correct go. score. The once and for all score. You better believe it. 1917. It got 8.2 on IMDb. But We're trying to really decide get? whether it deserves that. The main eye machine is giving the correct score, which would be. 7.57. Ah, oh, thank God it got in the sevens. You know what? Okay, here's why. It it wasn't very well written in terms of dialogue and character and the performances also struggled because of that. And those yeah. three just let this thing down. But not like, they're, they're still passable and some of them are still good. 7.57 is a very yeah, good score. It, it just... Again, stopping it from getting in the greats is what yeah. we're looking at. I, I agree. I think if you're going to get in the greats, you can't have dialogue and character like the one in 1917. Equally, what bolsters it is like a great cinematic direction. Oh my God. Visually yeah. stunning. Yeah. I, there, it has a lot going for it. Yeah. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. And I mean, look, the, the plot isn't exactly groundbreaking, um, but at the same time, it was an enjoyable, well-written plot that doesn't try to do too much more than just tell you a really good story. And yeah, so, sure. That's the conclusion. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to check us out on YouTube or Spotify. We release podcasts twice a week on films, Ooh. random discussions, all this and the other. If you're on YouTube, three videos a week. Check us out and we'll, uh, we'll see you there. Nice one. Thanks, Dave. <laughs>